I absolutely abhor answering this question. I don't look forward to this video. I, I struggle with the answer to this, not because I don't know the answer, but rather because the answer is so different to so many different people. There's not just one definition of what is business intelligence. Business intelligence is a massive term. It encompasses lots of different areas. And inevitably, my definition is going to be different from someone else's. You line up 100 different consultants that are in the data warehousing industry, and you ask them to define business intelligence you're going to probably get some variant of about 50 to 75 answers. Uh, so I'm going to give you my view of it, but please understand this is one man's opinion that doesn't make me right. Uh, it means that this is close, okay? but it doesn't mean that mine is the only version of what is business intelligence that's out there. Okay, So just kind of lead with that. All right, so business intelligence, you can see we're just kind of at the outset here. This is the hot buzzword, really, of about the last four to five years, and it's only getting hotter. Um, data warehousing, business intelligence, those are the hot markets to enter right now in the job market. Uh, if I were starting a brand new company, I certainly would be uh, taking a close look at something with business intelligence or something with data warehousing, because that's just where the world is moving. It's kind of like, at this point, the last frontier uh, of what has not really been developed. Uh, and this is 2010 that I'm recording this. By the time you watch this, who knows? Uh, there could be some other new technology. I, I don't know. But Here's my definition of BI. So here on page four, it's about getting the right information into the right people's hands in a format that allows them to quickly understand the data. Now, that's a rather pithy statement. And again, my definition is just one man's opinion of what business intelligence is. Okay, so it doesn't make it right. Okay? This is what I think it is. This is what the course is predicated on, if you will. Now, to me, business intelligence is not just about decision support. Okay, so it's not just about the making of the decisions here. It's not a methodology that describes the way to go from having no business intelligence to having a lot of business intelligence. There's no step-by-step -step instructions to have business intelligence. Okay? There's no, it's not a methodology uh, here. It's not just about reporting services. It's not just about crystal reports. It's not just about Excel or the tools that make that we use to make these decisions. Here's a, maybe an epiphany for you. This ain't SQL Server. Analysis services is not business intelligence. It doesn't make any sense once you understand what business intelligence kind of is and does and is about. You don't have to have a data warehouse to do business intelligence. If you don't know what data marks are uh, or really what a data warehouse is, you know, hey, that's what I'm here to help you with. So we'll cover that ground uh, in a couple of other videos uh, upcoming. I would be remiss if I didn't include definitions from other people. Um, the Wikipedia one that I saw, this was quoted from, I think, April or May 2010 here. BI refers to the skills, processes, technologies, applications, and practices used to support decision making. I like that one. I think that's a rather uh, very compact way to say that. The only thing that it's missing right there is making sure that the data that you get to the end user is in a format that they can understand quickly. And sometimes business intelligence fails at the usability end of the spectrum. Some of you who have been in BI will completely understand that. Uh, you know, there's a couple of other ones, and I, I realize you can read, so you have the PDF of this video, right? You can pull these up. Uh, and read these here. But uh, notice a couple of things here. BI is a broad category, blah, 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 blah. BI is an umbrella term, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so there's a lot of different ways that we can talk about what business intelligence is. And just because the guys at uh, Tech Target or CIO or Wikipedia say it's this one thing, you know, that's their opinion, that's their way of treating it. Just like this is my opinion, my way of treating it. Now, the way I visualize the needs 
for a business intelligence solution is kind of by this little chart here. What I'm trying to impart with this is that a team lead would probably have fewer BI needs than the person managing several team leads. The person managing several team leads has fewer requirements than the pe person managing several people who manage team leads, right? And the executives would have the most business intelligence needs, okay? Now, if we flip it, though, and we then take a look at the level of detail needed by position, it is flipped. A team leader, let's say that a team leader has five people reporting to them. That team leader needs to be able to look at detailed records about those five people. He needs to be able to identify trends, pattern. He needs to see particular things about an individual employee. A lower manager may be looking at the performance of each team. So down here, um, let me get my pen, sorry. Uh, up at the top right here, we're looking at detail. So uh, like this is a uh, highest level of detail. Right? And as we go down, we're looking at lower levels of detail. And that means that at the executive level, do you think the executive has time to read through every single detail report from a defect report? Right? Let's say that we're in manufacturing. We have 30 machines, each recording 200 transactions a second. Um, our executives aren't going to be looking through those reports, right? But they will be interested in the aggregations. Are they going to be looking on a per machine basis at the defect reports? Probably not. That's probably reserved for somebody in this spectrum up here. Team lead, lower manager, middle manager, uh, are identifying which machines maybe need help. But then our executives are looking, what is the overall number of defects? Last month, we were 99.9995% defect free. What are we this month? Right, so as we move up the chain of the hierarchy in our organizations, we tend to look at more aggregations. So more aggregates, and down at the team lead, we're looking at fewer aggregates and more detail level records. We're looking at the actual defect records. We're not looking at how many defects. We're looking at each individual defect to figure out what it was, what caused it, how we can resolve it. Right? So this is what business intelligence is all about and we need to define these levels so that we can understand fully where it fits in the organization. Right? Now let's just talk about in an organization that typical BI implementation. It's not all hardware and software based. Okay, may surprise you. The first place uh, that you're going to start, I think, logically, would be some type of a data entry system. Okay, uh, this would be your uh, CRM system, uh, where you enter customers, you respond to customers, uh, you take customer tickets, uh, things like that. Um, an airline ticketing system, a, uh, a web-based ticketing system where people can open tickets and customer support agents can respond to tickets and we can do reporting from the tickets. Defect tracking, order entry systems, uh, shopping carts. I'm not just talking about your old school data entry where you just hire some little employee to take a piece of paper and put it into a web form, right? I'm talking about complete data entry systems. Okay? Once we have the data entry systems in place, and most companies will have multiple data entry systems, not just a single one, now we talk about having the data warehouse. Now, you may not understand the data warehouse yet. That's what this chapter is all about. We will explode uh, the idea of the data warehouse, why, it, what it is, when we need it, what's different between it and the data mart, etc. But you can, for the time being, just imagine that all of these guys will get put into a data warehouse. So if we're an organization and we end up having every one of these things, they'll all go, that's an awful arrow, <laughs> they'll all get dumped into the data warehouse in some shape or form. Okay, Because from there, we want to build our reports against the data warehouse. 
our enterprise reporting system is going to give us multiple options. We're going to be, if you'll remember uh, our little pyramid here, let me see if I can draw a straight line. I'll try this. Right, so we've got our pyramid. Down here is the executives, and up here we've got the team leads. Okay. So if we are a team lead, our reporting is probably directly into these systems here. If we're wanting to see the individual defects. We're wanting to take a look at a particular order. We're wanting to look at one or two or three individual entries by our team members. Right? Down here with the executives, though, the executive reporting is wanting to go against the data warehouse. The executives want less detail more aggregations. We want to see how this is working within the enterprise. So that's likely against the data warehouse. Okay. Now this is not all. There's one more aspect of a business intelligence implementation. Can you guess? Can you imagine what it might be? I'll tell you it's not technically software. It's not technically hardware based. We have the databases people put stuff into. We have the reports that people read and theoretically use for smart decision making. What's missing here? What's missing is training. You can give people great reporting systems. You can give them great reports. But if they aren't trained on how to use them, if they don't understand the meaning of these reports, if they don't stop bugging your programmers to create new reports because there are already those reports that exist out there but this person just refuses to listen and understand that they're already there then it's just going to be a failure for that person so training on how to use the reporting system is going to be very important um, I did segment this originally in my first version of this slide um, and there were multiple areas of training uh, but in the end, I just left it to be training on how to use the reporting system because I felt the other segments were covered already. The other things that I was going to include, just to kind of give you an idea, is that your users or your programmers, somebody needs to be trained on data quality. Garbage in equals garbage out, right? So as the data comes into the data entry systems, we need to A, make sure that it's consistent as it comes into the data warehouse we need to be make sure that it conforms to a unified set of agreed upon rules and principles okay, we're all going to be reporting from the data warehouse so we have to interdepartmentally work together to come up with what the accepted things that go into the data warehouse are I know that's a nebulous statement we'll cover more of that when we talk about what the data warehouse is okay. but this is your pretty standard very generic version of what business intelligence is all about. It's not a system, it's not a methodology, it's not just about decision support, it's about the training, it's about the hardware, the software, it's a whole system that has to be implemented by the organization. Now another thing about BI that I want to bring to mind is I think that it's all about monitoring change. Okay. It's identifying the things that are trending upwards or trending downwards, understanding why, understanding the context. Like if we are a supermarket and all of a sudden we had this huge spike in sales in potato chips one day. Well, we might, if we weren't looking at context, we might think, well, that's just, we need to make sure on Fridays we have a large stock of potato chips. No, no, it just so happens that there was some major community food drive that gave people a tax credit for buying potato chips and donating them. And so, therefore, it was a one-time thing. We don't want to buy, have a lot of potato chips in the store anymore. Let's wait until next year. If they do it again, we'll order extra potato chips. Okay? So you've got to understand the context behind these trends, the context behind the numbers, so that you can either prepare for success or prevent failure. <laughs> um, identifying trends in quality control. Is your marketing working? Are you getting more people sign up? Uh, one problem in marketing is you can generate a lot of interest. A lot of people come and they sign up, but they're not buying. Generally, that tells you you were targeting the wrong group, so you got to figure out where and why and understand the context behind the numbers. Uh, defining organization goals, right? 
uh, you're monitoring the change within the organization okay as a company your company wants to react to changes right uh, if the economy is tanking you might need to uh, start monitoring your customers and monitoring your pricing um, we need to look at what our competitors are doing we also want to cause change by changing buying habits or it, interrupting people they weren't looking for this particular product but now we're going to do some interruptive marketing and make them actually be interested in purchasing this product right or maybe new features new pricing okay this isn't about business intelligence right but that's what a company wants to do business intelligence though is getting that information in the right people's hands in a way that understand lets them understand the data quickly so we have to allow management to be able to make the right changes we have to give them the information that allows them to have confidence in those decisions and we have to help them understand what changes are having the most ROI the least ROI what needs to get cut what needs to survive that's what business intelligence is all about we want to react to change and cause change as a company as an organization to do that we need great reporting and that's what our business intelligence system is all about okay? so the best companies put more money into projects with a better ROI and they kill off or lessen the projects that have little to no ROI business intelligence just simply helps you do that uh, a couple of final things here. I'm a small company guy, right? So I might run learn it first just by my own gut feeling. I think this works. That's what I'm going to do. And it works. I'll tell you that if you are the right kind of person in the right market, it works. Small companies can be run by gut decisions. Just it's worked for me in the past. I'm going to keep doing that. All right. This worked for my friend Kevin. He's in a similar industry, so I'm going to try it for my company. Okay. The decisions at the small company level aren't always made based on the analysis of lots and lots of numbers. A lot of times they are, I think this will work. They're based on a feeling, right? But when you get into the larger companies, the CEOs, the management, the VPs, they have to have buy in. You have to convince the board members the or an investor or investors or your other managers. You have to get buy-in from people, right? You can't just go based on gut feeling. Now you have to dig into the numbers. You have to do trend analysis, data mining. That's business intelligence, okay? That's what it's all about. Now, before we go on, I just have to warn you, business intelligence it's just a big term, right? It, it covers a lot of ground. You got to be wary of vendors who overuse the term. Um, I, I could give you uh, examples of certain companies who will say that they use business intelligence and data warehouses, and it's really not anything more than putting lipstick on a pig. Uh, they've just taken some ugly implementation and added a few fancy reports to it, and now they call it business intelligence, or they call it a data warehouse, and, you know, that's not really it. So just beware when somebody starts throwing too many terms about BI and data warehousing where they don't seem to fit. Um, you know, just kind of be careful <laughs> out there. All right, so let's get into the next video. Let's put this together with SQL Server.